I got a lot of shoes. Some of these shoes are in pretty good position or new. Some are pretty darn blown out. And uh, you know, they're starting to get holes come through them right here, right? So I thought that I would take some time to walk you through the five things that I look for to know whether my shoes are ready and still good to go or they need to be relocated to the dust heap. Because let's be honest, the three to 500 mile range most shoe companies give is, it's almost too broad to even be helpful. It'd be sort of like asking how your long run should be and being like, oh, how long should you run? And it's like, oh, maybe 10 miles or maybe 20, you know, somewhere in there is probably good. It's just this big 50% margin is just blah, useless. And also there's some of you out there that are successfully running in your shoes way beyond 500 miles, upwards of 1200 or more, and some are really struggling for that. So it comes down less about the mileage and more what's happened in those miles. And I'll be able to tell you those five things to look for starting with step number one. Hey, if you're watching this, remember you are a runner too and you need strength tips, run form drills, run workouts, everything to earn your miles, to make your miles the best things possible. And that's what this channel is about. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of our new videos come out each and every week. That's it, let's dive in. Now, for step number one, I actually do want to address the mileage thing because it's useful, not in and of itself, but it's useful as a general sense of keeping track of when these four other things really start to matter. Because if your shoes are less than 100 miles, they're fine, right? That's not really gonna be the issue. It's only when you start to see the mileage creeping up that you start to pay attention to these other things or you start planning ahead and thinking, hey, you know what? I am getting later in these shoes. I'll be able to tell with these next four steps whether they're still good or not, but I know that plus or minus this range, I'm gonna maybe make a trade. So that might preemptively get me to buy that next pair of shoes that I can immediately start rotating in a little bit more quickly. Now, old school, before the days of Strava and GPS anything, you know, runners would actually write the date of the, the, the first date they started running in the shoes. And it would give them a good rough, good rough indicator. And if you're someone who's, you know, putting in some good miles, you know, you'd want to start thinking about making that change of shoes in six months. Now, with things like Strava, you can actually upload whichever shoes you're, you're running in into Strava, into their little gear list. And so that when you do your run, you can select which shoe you ran in and then all of a sudden you're getting a much more up-to-date tracker of those miles. And again, I'm not throwing out the idea that, hey, once it hits a certain miles, it's gotta go. It's just helpful to think from a time and planning standpoint, hey, I've got this big race coming up or I've got this other event coming up. My miles are building on the shoe. I might get more miles, I might not, but I don't wanna find out the day before my race that my shoes have to go. I wanna be able to plan ahead. But let's get into the real things we'll look for and that's gonna be in step two. Now, the biggest thing that I look for in examining my shoes and looking at shoes of others are the wear patterns of the soles. You know, when I have a shoe that's new or doesn't have a lot of miles in, like these Brooks are probably around 100 miles, you can see that, hey, there's not that much crazy wear pattern here, how things are. But when I look over my Ultra Duos, I can say, hey, you know what, I've put a lot of miles in these things. And I can check a few things. One, I can just check the general tread. Hey, there used to be tread here. A lot of this is worn pretty down far away. Um, the other thing I can check is inconsistencies in the wear pattern. Hey, where does my foot actually hit the ground? It looks like I'm like a little bit more on the outside of my heel, which is fine. I sort of roll through. But if you're someone who's got some biomechanical issues, and hey, let's be honest, don't we all to a certain degree, we can start to tell if my heels are really rubbed off. Hey, maybe I'm someone who overstrides and heel strikes a little bit. If you're someone who's outside the shoe is like totally ground down, maybe you're in a shoe that's too supportive and you're being pushed out to your edges, you're, you're running in a more supinated standpoint or you're that person who is running like really skidded off in the middle, it's like maybe you're scuffing in some way and you're kicking things off. The problem with 
wearing running in shoes that have an uneven wear pattern, especially with these higher stack height shoes these days, is that all of a sudden you're not running on an uneven surface anymore, you're running where the shoe's a little bit tipped one way or another, and you can better believe that's gonna exacerbate those biomechanical things. So one, it's good feedback for what's your running form actually look like. Two, if it gets too uneven, then you're gonna wanna replace it, even if the midsole is good and the other things are good. The last thing about wear pattern eyes is just gonna be from a pure safety standpoint. And this might be more specifically to you trail athletes. This is a new pair of ultra superiors and this is last year's pair. And if you flip them around, you can totally see the difference in the tread, right? This one, I've totally worn the, the tread down for these shoes and this one, I have this nice spiky layer here. So from a safety, a slipping standpoint, if you are that trail athlete, you know, you wanna make sure that you've got some, some grip there. But even that's true for road. You know, if I'm wearing a road shoe that's really ground down, that's no good. This pair of Brooks is gonna be pretty darn grippy. But uh, if I were to get to something like this, it's like I'm kind of losing my grip here on this shoe. Let's go on to step number three. The next thing we wanna look at is going to be the bounce of the shoe, the feel. That's kind of like the soul, how this shoe actually responds on the road. And there's always that, you know, there's such thing as new car smell, right, when we get in there. Well, there's that fresh shoe bounce that we get super excited about when we go to the running shoe store, we put those new shoes on, like, man, these things feel so good. It's because that foam hasn't had a chance to get impacted down all the way. And just with time, with mileage, that's exactly what happens with these things. They get more and more impacted and that starts to affect the feel of this. This is such a slow, subtle change. It's like, because it changes so fractionally every single day, it's like really hard to notice. It's like watching hair grow. <laughs> You're not really gonna be able to tell in the short term, but if you can take pauses or snapshots, you can start to see the changes. If it starts to feel a little off, it's worthwhile investigating. And one of the best ways to tell is actually if you can go into a running shoe store and put on a fresh pair of the same model, run in those a few steps, go back into your old shoes and make a comparison and you can start to see. As I just mentioned before, fresh pair of ultra superiors, old pair of uh, ultra superiors, I could kind of feel the difference in these things when I ran from one thing to the other. Now, just a note on the bounce and the type of shoe you're in. For shoes that do have this higher stack height and more foam, more foam is gonna be compressed. I'm gonna see a bigger difference in bounce and feel with shoes that are a little more minimalist, a little bit lower, lower to the ground. You know, this stack height's a lot lower, not as much to be impacted. And so I feel like these lower stack height shoes aren't gonna be compressed as much and they are by default going to last a little bit longer. But finally, step four, we're not finally, we got more steps after that, but step four. Now, I wanna tread lightly on this next step because when it comes to feeling aches and pains in our bodies, it's a dangerous road to start blaming it on our shoes because it, kind of removes us from any and all responsibility in the situation. It's like, oh, this shoe caused my injury. Oh, I'm in these shoes and now I'm not injured. Our bodies don't work that way. It's actually up to us to improve our mechanics and make sure we maintain those mechanics for longer periods of time. It's up to us to strengthen our bodies, improve our range of motion, and to adapt all those daily self-care habits to keep our body humming at the rate we want it to. That's really in essence why I'm wearing an earn your miles shirt because hey, you gotta put the work in to earn the miles you wanna run. Now, the shoes do make a difference, right? And if you are doing all of this stuff, you're doing all the daily self-care, and you're starting to notice even on your regular easy runs, you know, in addition to the flatness of the shoe, you're starting to feel some aches and pains that are just not normal, like maybe your shins or your knees, uh, or even sometimes your feet can start to feel a little bit more sore, beat up. That's another sign that your shoes might be ready to go. Hey, if we're being honest, weather can also play a big role. You know, am I out in the rain all the time or am I running through a lot of wet, muddy, sloppy trails? That just seems to take life off of the shoe a little bit. The upper gets a little bit stretched out and worn out that, that mud, that wetness just soaks into the shoe and it just has its impact. 
So that can start to contribute to the deadness of the shoe. If I'm running through a winter or a wet fall, I might not be expected to get as much traffic or traction out of that shoe uh, as I would during other times of the year. Conversely, am I running the shoe over super hot cement every single summer? You know, maybe that's gonna actually just start to exacerbate the tread that starts to wear off as well, right? So we wanna start to think a little bit about the weather in terms of impacting the shoe. And if I've been running in those extremes, that's a sign that my shoe might be readier more often than normal to replace. Quick bonus sign you might be ready to replace shoes is that you're diving into a new area of running and you need the right tool for the job. For example, let's say you've started off with that pretty classic everyday trainer, right? Such as this Brooks Glycerin right here. Maybe you're ready to uh, perform at a higher level on the marathon. So you might go ahead, hey, you know what? I want the Hoka Carbon X or I have been someone who's been dealing with some injuries and I want something with a little bit of a plusher ride. I might do the Nike Infinity React or I'm super stoked about getting on the trails. So I want something with that grip and that bite more like these fresh pair of shoes right here or these new Strike Vimianas, which got their nice little tread right there. You want the right tool for the job. And what's nice is that when you actually start running in multiple different pairs, as you can see for all these shoes, I uh, rotate in and out of them pretty regularly. You'll get more life out of each and every shoe if you do that. So rather than just ride one horse into the ground, you got some fresh horses out back and you can rotate and keep on rolling through. Now, as promised, I gotta sort through some of these shoes that I'm gonna keep, some of these shoes that I am going to toss. I mentioned these Ultra Duos. These things are like two or three years old. I have no idea how many miles I've put on them, but just telling by the tread and the fact that, hey, this upper is starting to tear and some holes in it, I gotta let them go. These gotta go. The next pair of shoes are going to be my Nike Wild Horses. Again, these shoes are a couple years old. I run in and out of them. Just the tread is totally gone. Bounce is starting to feel it. And yeah, I'm starting to get those little holes in them. So hey, these gotta go. Tokyo Meta Racers, these guys are brand new. They probably got 50, 100 miles. Uh, lots of great spring. You can see the tread is fine. I'm keeping these. My Ultras, oh man, the Lone Peaks. I love these shoes. They took me all the way around Mont Blanc over 115 miles hiking. You can see the tread's pretty good because we haven't taken them on the pavement that much, but the bounce, it's totally impacted. It's totally snapped and dirt and dust has fallen off. So these gotta go. My Ultra Superiors, I love these. I've been giving these as an example of signs to look for that the shoes are gone. So sorry guys, you gotta go, but hey, thank you to Ultra for sending me a fresh new pair of uh, Superiors, nice tread, I'm keeping these. These Brooks things, I've got these a uh, couple months in them. I don't know how much mileage, but the response is good, tread is good, no wear patterns, and they feel comfortable, so I'm happy with those. These guys are brand new. They're a little dusty, because it's just that time of year, but really nice tread. I've only gotten a handful of walks, so I'm keeping these. These might be the next ones to go. I've been running in these Nike Infinity Reacts probably since January. And the tread's starting to go a little bit, not major, but I'm just starting to notice a little bit of loss in that bounce. It's starting to feel a little flat at the end. So I probably won't wear these as much, and I will be thinking about replacing these things sooner than later. So I'm gonna keep them here to the side, not the main one. The Hoka Carbon Xs, these things are bomb. I only have uh, probably 50 miles, 75 miles in so these guys are good to go for a while same thing with the Mach 3s I got a little bit more miles in them but not too much and so there we go thanks guys for helping me clean out my shoe closet a little bit now if you are curious about what you know how long what running shoes do and, and really how long they last well I did a whole investigation on this whole thing I asked a bunch of you guys online, it's playing over my shoulder right here. Fascinating video, just playing on this thing. Well, we know the signs, but actually, like what are people getting for miles on their shoes? Because believe it or not, it's pretty crazy. I'm gonna keep filming guys, you keep earning your miles. I'll see you in the next video. That uh, lower part of the, lower, lower part of the shoe.